going on everyone? It's DK with RPM Gaming where we talk about retro PC and mobile gaming. And today we're going to be breathing new life into this old Nintendo 64 controller. We're going to be making it Bluetooth with a Hall Effect thumbstick. We're going to be doing so with an 8-bit dough mod kit. So let's get started. You can pick these up over on 8-Bit Doe's website for right at $39.99. Out of the box, you have a PCB board replacement, your Bluetooth slash rumble pack, a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, a little Phillips screwdriver, the Hall Effect thumbstick, and of course, your instruction manual. The first thing that we're going to be doing is taking all of the screws out of the back of the Nintendo 64 controller. There are nine total, seven of which are pretty obvious. But the last two are kind of hidden inside that rumble pack compartment. Once all the screws have been removed, then we'll be separating the controller. And it should come apart fairly easy because there's not any clips that are holding it together. And there it is, like opening a time capsule. Next up, we'll be removing our shoulders and rubber membranes that go with them, as well as the rubber membrane for the trigger. Now it's time to take out the original thumbstick module. So just remove the three screws holding that in and it'll come right out. Once we have that out of the way, now it's time to install the new Hall Effect thumbstick. Over on 8 Doe's website, down under the DIY section, they have quite a few mods for a lot of different controllers, including GameCube, the NES Classic, the SNES Classic, as well as the PlayStation Classic. I have seen a few mods for controllers like these on Amazon that are cheaper, but I'm not really sure how well they work. Now that we've got our Hall Effect thumbstick installed, it's time to place the PCB board. You'll want to gently remove the tape from the part of the PCB board that goes to the trigger button. Once that's done, we can finally slide our board into place on the controller. After that, you'll want to make sure the trigger piece is underneath the slots on the thumbstick module. And this piece should just kind of clip in there right underneath those slots pretty easily. Next up, we'll want to grab our rubber membrane for our trigger button and slide it underneath those same slots or tabs. And you might kind of have to work it in just a little bit to get it to stay. Mine ended up coming off a couple of times when I was finally able to get it into place and get it to stay. Now it's time to connect our thumbstick module to the PCB board. You just want to slide that connector in there and make sure it goes all the way in. Next, we'll remove the tape from the shoulder portions of our board, line up our rubber membranes, and put those into place along with our shoulder buttons. FYI, the rubber membranes only go on one way, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. The thumbstick module is the only piece inside the controller that's actually screwed down. The PCB board, the shoulder buttons, and rubber membranes all just kind of loosely set in place until you get the controller snapped back together. That's what holds everything into place. And the last piece of this little puzzle is this little plug right here. And it'll set in place of where your cord was. It's used to keep dust and stuff from getting inside the controller. And it'll just loosely set in there like the rest of it until you get the controller snapped back together. And everything's nice and tight. All right, we've got our controller back together and all of our screws in place. And this Hall Effect thumbstick is a lot more beefy than the original one, which I like. I don't think you'll have to worry about this one snapping off and stabbing you in the hand. All of our buttons feel just like they did before we took it apart, so I'm guessing everything's in place like it should be. Now let's snap in our Bluetooth rumble pack and get this thing started. On our rumble pack, we've got our ZR button our menu button, our pairing button, and our star button which is used to take screenshots or do screen captures. And then we've got our USB-C charging port. You hit the start button to turn on the controller. You can see the little blue light flashing there. And then underneath there's a toggle to go back and forth between switch and direct input mode. When pairing the controller to the switch it's pretty straightforward. Just turn the controller on, make sure the blue light is flashing in pairing mode, Go to the controller section, select change grip order, and then it should pair automatically within just a few seconds. And we're ready to go. We'll check out a little Mario 64 on the Switch and see how this thumbstick does. So far it seems pretty responsive. I like the way it feels too over the original. It's a little more beefy and I like that. It's almost like the thumbstick on the old GameCube controller. The other inputs seem to be doing pretty well too. Not really seeing any lag. I'm sure there's probably some, but it's not enough for me to notice it. Checking out a little golden eye. Used to get down on this. 
This N64 controller with the Bluetooth mod on it, it will connect to PC, but I ran into a little bit of a problem with it, with the rumble pack getting stuck in the on mode when you do certain commands. The PC is the only thing that I connected this to that I had that problem on. When you're running it on iOS, I didn't have that problem, but the rumble doesn't work on iOS, only on Switch and on PC. If you're using it on iOS, the process is about the same. Just hold down your pairing button until the blue light starts flashing rapidly, and then it'll show up under your Bluetooth devices as N64 controller. Just select it, and there you go. We're going to play a little WWF No Mercy using RetroArch with this new Bluetooth N64 controller. And the controls feel good, just like they did with the original controller. Like I said before, if there's any lag in it, it's not enough for me to notice. Now, if you're using this on RetroArch, you will have to go in and map your buttons. Because when you start it off to begin with, they're not mapped correctly. So like the punch button is not working right now for me. So I'm going to have to go in here and remap the buttons on it. And speaking of buttons... Here's a quick rundown of the buttons on the rumble pack. The star button, as we mentioned earlier, is used for taking screenshots. Then of course you have your little Wi-Fi button there. And then next over the button with the checkers on it, if you're playing on Nintendo Switch, that's going to bring up your home menu. So that's like your home button. If you're on iOS, it'll bring up the game center. And then your ZR button, if you're playing on Nintendo Switch, is matched exactly to the ZR button on the Switch. And then for your ZL button, you'll use the actual trigger on the Nintendo 64 controller. If you're using this controller on iOS or PC, then you can map these buttons however you'd like. The controller has a 500 milliamp built-in battery. So with that, you're going to get around 8 hours of gameplay. And it's going to take about 1 to 2 hours to charge it fully. And so yeah, that's about it for the 8-Bit Doe Mod Kit. I gotta say I'm enjoying it. Alright everyone, we got our mod kit installed. And it's working really well. Let me know what you guys think about that. Keep an eye out in the next few weeks or maybe a month or so for the new video that we're going to do on the Analog 3D, which we're going to be using these controllers on. That's Analog's version of the Nintendo 64. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Check out our other videos, and we'll see you next time on RPM Gaming.